everyone, Emily here. In today's video, we'll be taking a closer look at the Xbox Series S. Now, I have unboxed this console and you can view that video in the card above, so definitely be sure to check that out. In this review video, I'll be sharing with you five questions from the Instagram community, plus my thoughts and experiences while using the Xbox Series S. So, stay tuned. First off, five people reached out on Instagram and I wanted to dive into those questions first. So, number one, does the Xbox One controller work on the Series S? Yes, it does and it was super easy. So what you need to do is turn on your Xbox Series S and then turn on your Xbox One controller, hit the sync button on both the controller and the front of the Series S console and it, in within moments it was working. Question two, how's the D-pad? Well, I really like the hybrid D-pad and the textured triggers. The controller feels solid in my hands. It does seem ever so slightly smaller, but I do like it much more than the standard Xbox One S controller. Question three, does it smell good? Yes, yes it does. Question four, do I get to keep the Series S or is this a review unit to be returned? Now this console is the exact same unit that is going to market on November 10th and Xbox Australia were kind enough to send this over to me to review and I do get to keep this unit. Now just remember that all of the information that I provide you in this review are my own views and in my own words and testing that I've done myself. Lucky last question number five, does the Series S feel strong or light and cheap? In my opinion, I believe the Series S is actually a well-weighted and strong build. Uh, no way does it feel flimsy or cheap at all, and uh, I don't believe it would topple over easy in the vertical position in your cabinet either. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it in the vertical position or replace where my Xbox One was, uh, laying down in the cabinet, so we will see about that. The case on both the Series S and the Xbox One S feels similar and is a matte finish. I do like the look of the consoles and as I've noted before, I prefer the Series S controller as it's leaps and bounds better than the One S version. Now let's look at a few other items that I've tested on the Xbox Series S. The boot time. The Series S switches on from the off state and it took around 5.72 seconds. The menus on the Series S are quick and easy to load and navigate. I also found it was much quicker in the store to search, which really enhanced my user experience. Now opening a game in comparison to the Xbox One S, the Xbox Series S is a lot faster to load. Jumping into Gears 5 was lightning fast, along with starting a new game. Another enhancement to the user experience is quick resume. So on the Series X and the Series S, you will both have access to quick resume. And in most cases, it took about eight seconds to load into a new game, which is gonna be fantastic for people on stream that flip through games and change them up often. Next, let's talk about graphics and your monitors. Now the console will always change the default settings based on your monitor or TV setup. In my instance, the Xbox Series S is upscaling 4K at 60 frames. The native 1440p at 120 frames is supported by my IOC monitor, but I've opted for the 4K option to run my Xbox Series S. As you can see on screen, I'm running Elgato's 4K capture software, and the Xbox Series S is upscaling to 4K. First off, let's take a look at 4K 60 frames while playing Gears 5. Ah, there they are. Okay, let's put them down. Get into cover. Now I've updated the settings to 1440p at 120 frames and we're going to play the same scene in Gears 5. Ah, there they are. I'll take care of this one. 
So this will be entirely up to you how you set up your Xbox Series S uh, based on the monitor that you own. Now I do recommend if you would like the best experience with next gen gaming and everything it has to offer that you may need to upgrade your monitor or TV setup. But the great news is that everything is changed, you can change it in the settings menu uh, which was really easy as you can see. For me personally I'm going with the upscaled 4K 60 frames. So the verdict. The Xbox Series S, you can't even tell that it is on or running. It does not make a noise at all. The only way I could tell that it was on is if I run my hand across the vent here. You can tell that there is some heat coming out of it, which is in no way any hotter than any other console that I am running in my games room. And the other way you could tell that it was on was by the light. This thing is whisper quiet. So for the past week, I have been testing the Xbox Series S and I've played a number of different games. Now this is not a full review on those, but I have played Dirt 5, Yakuza Like a Dragon and Gears 5 with the optimization for the X and S. And the console has not missed a beat. It has been, as I said, whisper quiet, extremely quiet. You don't even realize that it is on and I haven't had any frame rate dips. Uh, it's performed exceptionally well. I have used it here in my setup uh, through Elgato Capture Card. I've also used it obviously with my AOC monitor and then in my main room with the Sony 4K 75 inch. And the picture looks phenomenal. It looks really, really good. Now, I do believe that the Xbox Series S is a great addition to the next gen lineup and a great entry level into the market. Now, the reason why I say entry level is still that this is a great console that's going to run games at high frame rates, especially if you don't want to build a high end PC to do that. So that is a huge positive. The one negative that I take away uh, from this is that it uh, only has 364 gig usable space on the Xbox Series S, which is quite small. And if you're going to be playing uh, quite a lot of uh, online games like I do um, and downloading games on Game Pass, it's actually quite small. But there is a positive that I wanted to touch on and I do have a Seagate hard drive that was really easy to set up. Now that is two terabytes. I was lucky enough that I have one already and it doesn't uh, take away from being plugged into the front of the console, that is fine. Uh, so instead of using it on my Xbox One S, I'm going to use it on my Xbox Series S. Uh, so if you do have one and you have uh, pre-ordered and are going to purchase, this version of the uh, the next gen Xbox, I definitely recommend that you uh, try and get a hard drive. I, I think that's going to be the only downfall of this console at this time. But overall, from my testings and uh, testing over the week and findings from this console, I definitely love it. I love the Xbox Series S and uh, it's not missed a beat. So I'm gonna be playing this for the rest of the day today and tomorrow and going forward. Uh, definitely love it. Thank you very much Xbox Australia for asking me to be involved in reviewing this. Now, if you have any other questions, definitely hit the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you all. Uh, I'll try and get back to every single question. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.